Hi LEGO fans, this is a set that requires little or no introduction. It's the biggest and most expensive commercially available set LEGO have ever produced. And today I'm going to unbox, speed build and review set number 75192, the Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon from LEGO Star Wars. This comes with a huge 7,541 piece part count, which puts it 1,618 pieces ahead of the next biggest set, the Taj Mahal. As you'd expect from an Ultimate Collector Series set with a price tag of $800, the packaging has a pretty premium feel to it. It also has to be very strong to contain almost 34 pounds of LEGO. The box also lists the dimensions of the finished build, and this is a big one. It's a massive 33 inches or 83 centimeters long, 24 inches or 60 centimeters wide, and stands 9 inches or 22 centimeters high. We also get a selection of seven minifigures, two porgs, and a BB-8. From the original trilogy, we've got C-3PO, a young Han Solo, and Princess Leia, but disappointingly, no R2-D2. And then from episodes 7 and 8, we've got the older Han Solo, the Silver Fox, Chewbacca, Finn, and Rey. And of course, we've got a pair of Porgs. Or should it be a pair of Porg? I've got to be honest, I don't know what the collective noun for a Porg is. The other side panel was designed by the marketing people and contains mainly words. We've got a paragraph of text about the set in English, French, and Spanish. There's also some really nice art showing the UCS Millennium Falcon superimposed over some Star Wars scenes. The back of the box is lavishly decorated in product photography, and there are images showing all of the scenes you can recreate from the Star Wars movies. The UCS Millennium Falcon comes with interchangeable sensor dishes so you can display it in classic form or configured as it's seen in episodes 7 and 8. You can recreate the scene from The Empire Strikes Back where the crew are attacked by Minox, and there are many removable panels where you can get inside the Millennium Falcon and recreate scenes from the movies. So we've got a very cool box of Lego, but I'm really keen to see what's inside. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing. This is truly amazing. We've got boxes within boxes. I really like the way the Millennium Falcon has been printed onto the ends of those four boxes. The boxes themselves are not numbered, so I guess we're gonna have to open up every one of these before we can get building. These are beautifully printed and each one has a quote about the Millennium Falcon. She may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts, kid. I've made a lot of special modifications myself. It's the ship that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. Of course, a parsec is a measurement of distance and not time. And finally on box number four, that classic, she's the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. So here's a quick rundown on everything we got inside the box. We've got 66 bags of Lego numbered 1 through 17, an enormous 494 page spiral bound instruction manual, and a mercifully small sticker sheet. We're going to film the entire build process and roll it up into a speed build. If you don't want to see the speed build and you want to skip straight to the review, just click the link in the video description.
And here's the completed 7,541 piece Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon. This took an insane finger numbing 19 hours and 8 minutes to put together. And let me tell you, this is no toy. It definitely ranks in the expert category for ages 16 and up. And you definitely need to pay close attention to the instruction manual because mistakes on a set this big can be really difficult to put right later on in the build. But what a thing this is. As you can tell from the scale of the minifigures next to the model, this thing is huge. And being such a large set, it's really difficult to move around. So LEGO give you specific guidance in the instruction manual on how to lift this thing. Even so, there is a tendency for pieces to drop off and it's really difficult to find out where they went. Hopefully you found the speed build interesting, but it's really difficult to see what's going on when you're cramming 19 hours of video into three minutes. Building the UCS Millennium Falcon breaks down into a few different stages. First, we build the main subframe. This forms a skeleton of the Millennium Falcon and is what we attach everything else to. That's supported by seven feet, and then we begin to build the interior modules. Those modules are built separately and then locked into place on the chassis. With all the interior complete, we then start to build the outer cladding. Some of those panels are attached to the Millennium Falcon and some just fit neatly on top. We've also got the two sections that extend from the center of the Millennium Falcon and of course the cockpit. If you do want to follow along with the build in more detail, I'm going to release a 19 minute version of the speed build. That breaks every hour of the build down into one minute sections, which makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. And of course we have the building of the seven minifigures, two Porgs and a BB-8. I'm going to take a look at the minifigures a little bit later in the video, but if you want to jump to that section, feel free to click on the hyperlink in the video description. Without further ado, let's get in a little bit closer and take a guided tour of the Millennium Falcon. Like all Ultimate Collector Series sets, this is primarily designed for display and we get our own display plaque. As you can see, the Millennium Falcon is a Corellian Light Freighter YT-1300 series modified by Han Solo. The cockpit is wrapped in custom pieces designed exclusively for the UCS Millennium Falcon. The cone at the end here is actually two pieces and there's a custom printed satellite dish on the front holding it together. You can put minifigures inside, but this does require some disassembly. The cockpit does come equipped with some controls. In this case, we've got some printed computer screens. It's a tight squeeze in there and I did end up removing the cockpit to get the minifigures seated. But it does sit four minifigures and a pull quite comfortably. And with a little gentle manipulation, I was able to get the canopy back on so it passes the minifigure test. The way the cockpit is attached to the main frame is really neat, but to show you requires the removal of those scary panels on top. You'll notice when you get inside the Millennium Falcon, there are lots of colored pieces inside. These make it a little bit easier when you following the instructions to see how things slot together. The cockpit assembly clicks into place here and then there's a bracer bar to give it strength. There's no interior decoration in this part of the Millennium Falcon but it gives you a good opportunity to have a look at some of the framework. And down there you can see a piece that's fallen off, just one of the many joys of ownership. Thankfully on this occasion it was easily reattached but you're not often so lucky with this set. Another neat feature you can see in this part of the set is this gun here which can actually be dropped down through a trapdoor like so, and that hangs down below the ship. While we're taking a look at the underside of the ship, this is a good opportunity to have a look at those feet. There are seven of these in total holding up the massive weight of the Millennium Falcon. The two sides that radiate out from the center do look purely decorative, but this one does hide a secret. This is where the entry ramp descends from the Millennium Falcon. Looking up at the ship from the rear, you can see the main booster engines. And with the minifigures in shot, you can really get a sense of the scale of this thing. Also, you'll notice a lot of these outer panels are not attached very well. Cosmetically, that's not really a bad thing, but you're definitely going to want to keep this out of the reach of children. But to get the best view of the Millennium Falcon, you really need to go topside. And this is a great place to start for exploring the interior. The top of the ship is incredibly detailed and took many hours to build. We've got vents to dissipate the heat from the enormous engines. Countless pipes, vents and ducts covering the exterior and enough weapons to equip a small army. We've also got various elements you wouldn't expect to see on the outside, including blasters, wheel hubs, old fashioned telephone handsets and even some minifigure roller skates. There are telescopes galore, pieces of armoured vehicle track and even handlebar elements. To get inside the Millennium Falcon, we have to remove a loosely attached jigsaw of plates. This is not for the faint hearted.
The key to getting inside is to handle it with care and avoid using brute force. I even left one of the plates in place. While these plates fit together very nicely as a jigsaw, they do need some help. And a lot of these have got a spoke on the bottom there. Where you see one of those, there's always a black element with holes in and these just literally slot in. But that is really, really difficult to do and you're gonna have to have some patience. Most of the interior modules are built separately, pushed up from beneath the ship and snapped into place. You're going to see lots of fixings like this, where I can pull this out to release the interior modules. That's how we keep these in place. You can also see some of the exterior detail that is exposed through gaps in the outer plates. Here's an example of one of those at the front of the ship. This section of the ship's interior is left bare. It feels a little bit cheap for an $800 set, but it does present the opportunity to make something from it. Or perhaps use it for some of Captain Solo's more exotic smuggling. The other side is built out and you can see one of the tunnels, which is a stickered piece, and some of the ship's computers. There's an interesting printed part, which looks like part of the ship's drive system. And there are two opening hatches here, which my wife mistook as the ship's laundry. Then there's another imagined hallway, courtesy of a sticker which leads to the quarters at the front of the ship. The gunner's position in the centre of the ship is also removable and reveals a very nice printed piece. There's a very laid back seating position and that enables the minifigure to operate the guns at the top. These guns really add to the impressive firepower. Before we move to the interior rooms at the front of the ship, I'd better put those rear panels back on. Wish me luck! Trust me when I say this is no playset. As we move into the front section of the ship, you can see the instantly recognisable satellite dish from the Millennium Falcon in the original trilogy. The main dish is an exclusive custom printed part, and the detailing in the centre is actually a Japanese-style conical hat. Thankfully, there are very few stickers in this set, but we do get some sticker detail to show a little bit of battle scarring. You can also see some loosely fitting top plates which hide some interior goodness. Let's take a look. If you watch the latest Star Wars films very carefully, you may notice that the Millennium Falcon no longer has this satellite dish. Yes, it's received an upgrade, and LEGO have provided us with an alternative satellite dish, so we can display this in the original trilogy style, or in the style of the more up-to-date Disney movies. We simply lift off the old dish, and replace it with the new dish. Inside we've got the original quarters you may recognise from the movies. There's a comfortable seating area complete with holographic chess. That is a superb custom printed piece. We've also got the combat training helmet used by Luke in the original trilogy. There's yet another imaginary corridor to other parts of the ship. That's a stickered piece. And a large computer console complete with chair. Time to put this thing back together again. I know I complained a lot about how difficult it is to remove those panels. Thankfully, the designers have made it a little bit easier if you just want to have a casual peek inside. There are some smaller removable panels which are much easier to get into. These don't exactly give you full access, but they do enable you to get to the parts of the ship that you'll probably want to show to your friends. And these are much easier to put back into place. The front of the ship is a great recreation of the Millennium Falcon and has an absolute ton of detail. Just look at the sheer volume of Lego elements that are stuck to the outside of the ship. And if you ever need any minifigure display stands in light grey, this set has them in abundance. So there you have it, the Ultimate Collector Series Millennium Falcon, the most expensive hunk of Lego junk in the galaxy. But before I give you my final verdict on the set, let's take a look at those minifigures. Here's the full minifigure lineup. From left to right, we've got Han Solo Senior, Rey, Finn, Chewbacca, C-3PO, Han Solo Jr. and the beloved Princess Leia. It's so awesome that we get the younger and the older Han Solo minifigures, and it would be a crime not to show them together. All of the minifigures are dressed in the appropriate screen costume, and young Han Solo is no exception. He's got a white shirt and the blue jacket that he wore in the movies, and then he's got these brown pants on with the belt, utility belt there for his blaster, and some nice metallic detailing on the front. The back is a little bit plainer, we've just got a little bit of uh, black printing there for the detail. And then if you look at the facial printing, it's perfect, even down to the scar on the chin. The hair is also perfect, that's a great hair piece. And then on the back we've got a unique print for the minifigure. He's wearing the breathing mask that they used when the Millennium Falcon landed on the asteroid and they were encountering Minox. 
So let's just put that back on, and that is the awesome younger Han Solo. Here's the Han Solo you see in the later movies, hence the grey hair and the addition of some wrinkles on the face. He's dressed in a similar costume to the earlier Han Solo, definitely not changed his style, but he's wearing a white polo shirt this time and a brown jacket. And then he's still got the blaster belt there and some great metallic detailing on the front. Very similar on the back here, just a little bit of printing for the detail of the creases of the jacket and really nice hairpiece again. Let's turn him round. You can see he's got a rather more aggressive expression on the back. And that is our senior Han Solo. This is Rey. She's dressed in quite a traditional Jedi style with the robes and the belt around the middle there. And that is some really crisp printing. Speaking of crisp printing, the face is also very, very crisp. You can probably make out those freckles, which are very fine details indeed. On the back, we've got the similar printing there for the robes, and she's got this fantastic hairpiece. Look at the three buns she's got in her hair. That is awesome. And then she's got the more stern expression on the back. So a great Ray figure. Really like that. Really like that hairpiece. That's awesome. This is Finn, and I've got to say I like this minifigure a lot better than the Brickheads version that I reviewed. Uh, he's wearing these plain black pants and then this really nicely printed jacket with some metallic zippers and uh, whatever that is. That is something in his pocket there, I'm not sure. Uh, he's got a great facial expression showing his teeth. And if we take the hair off, you can see we've got a slightly less expressive expression on the back there and a little bit of printing on the back of the jacket. He's got a really nice hairpiece, uh, which is definitely not made of studs like the uh, Brickheads version. And that is the awesome Finn. One thing we've learned from the latest Star Wars movies is that either Wookiees have the equivalent of just for men or they age much better than Han Solo's. And on that segue, this is Chewbacca. He's a great looking minifigure. We've had many iterations of him throughout the Lego Star Wars history. And this is by far the best yet. He's wearing this metallic bandolier that curls around his back. And best of all, he comes bearing toys. We've got this stud firing crossbow, which I'm gonna try now. Yep, that got you straight in the lens. And that is the awesome Chewbacca. Here's another minifigure that's improved over the years. This is C-3PO. Printing on the earlier minifigures was much less detailed and here we've got lots of different colors. We've even got some metallic accenting. Uh, same thing on the back there. Very, very detailed print and all printed onto this gold minifigure, which looks great. Now the actor who played C-3PO famously didn't get along with R2-D2 in the movies. I actually met the actor who played R2-D2 once. He lived in the same town as me in the north of England, a place called Preston. I actually bumped into him out shopping one day, which was very, very cool. But that aside, this is the awesome C-3PO. And finally, we've got Princess Leia dressed in this fantastically printed white outfit with some metallic detailing there for the badge. This looks like a great minifigure. Got some similar printing on the back there. Really, really nice and crisp. Uh, great hair there. She actually got it in braids rather than the uh, the round buns on the side. Uh, let's take a look at that expression on the back. Yes, she, of course she was on the Millennium Falcon when they landed on the asteroid and she also went outside with the Minox. Of course, Princess Leia was played by the late, great Carrie Fisher, who is still sorely missed. But it's great to see that LEGO have really done her memory justice and produced this great Princess Leia minifigure. Not only do we get seven minifigures with the UCS Millennium Falcon, we also get some buildable critters and a BB-8. Here are the adorable little porgs who don't look very happy. They're mostly brick built out of standard LEGO elements, except for the head. The head is the same mold that you see on BB-8, but obviously printed up with a porg's face. Porgs are based on puffins, which are small seabirds that live on the islands where the scenes with Rey and Luke Skywalker were filmed for The Last Jedi. The buildable LEGO porgs are much smaller than a real thing and not quite as cute cute, but they are a lot less noisy. So that was my comprehensive unboxing, speed build and review of set number 75192, the Ultimate Collector's Series Millennium Falcon from LEGO Star Wars. It's taken me about 30 hours to film and edit this video, so if you did enjoy it, please don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. So what are my final thoughts on this model? Firstly, it's a heck of a lot of money. Secondly, it's quite fragile, so it's not something you're going to want to play with, and it's not something you want to leave near children. The unboxing 
unboxing experience was by far the best unboxing experience of any Lego set I've ever had the pleasure of owning. The build was very arduous at over 19 hours, and at times it felt like the designers were using elements just to boost that part count. It also makes your fingers really, really sore. Could this be better? Damn right it could. Some of the interiors feel unfinished, and the way some of those panels fit to the actual model is pretty flimsy. But in terms of impressing people with the largest Lego build ever made, this really does fit the bill. It looks impressive, it was impressive to build, and you definitely know you have something special when you pick this thing up because it weighs so much. The main problem with this set apart from the credit card bill is finding somewhere to display it. The best thing I've seen so far is someone who made a custom made coffee table with a glass top that you can put the Millennium Falcon inside. And to be honest, that's probably the best place for it. So would I recommend you go out and buy this? If you're looking for an investment piece to leave in the box for the future, yes. If you're a serious adult fan of Lego, then this is a must have set. But if you're a more casual collector, $800 will buy you a lot of Lego sets. So why not buy 40 $20 sets and just really enjoy them? For me, the Ultimate Collector's Series Millennium Falcon has been an awesome experience. I really enjoyed unboxing, building and reviewing the set. And I hope you've enjoyed watching along. So don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more and check out my channel for more than 150 other Lego review videos. I release two new videos every single week so you'll always find something new or something old you can enjoy on my channel. Thanks for joining me on this epic adventure. My name's Jeremy Herbert. Stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.